Hi, welcome to our channel. This is Kaya. In case you haven't met her, she's our new Shichi. She's six months old and she is part Shih Tzu and part Chihuahua. So she's a Shichi. On this video, we're going to be discussing how Kaya the puppy becomes Kaya the experienced boat dog. She's out with us this summer and hopefully she's going to learn to not do that. Growl at the neighbors. <laughs> That's not nice, Kaya. Naughty. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Sandy. And I'm Paul and we're aboard Sea Oasis. We're now living part-time in Washington uh, in the San Juan Islands. We always enjoyed outdoor activities and exploring. So now we're spending time exploring this area as well as Canada and eventually Alaska. And we want to share our experience and adventures with you and people like you who enjoy the same kinds of things. So welcome aboard. A lot has changed since Kaya came home to our house at eight weeks old. She's still curious and she still loves to play with her toys. When I first saw Kaya, I thought I was picking a puppy for our daughter who is losing her dog due to liver cancer. In the end, my daughter admitted she wanted an older dog because she didn't want to go through the puppy stage when she was away during the day at her job. So Kaya became my dog, and that was fine with me because I'd already fallen in love with her. I wanted to get the most alert and playful dog of the litter. I certainly got that with Kaya. When I saw her among her siblings, she seemed to be more interested in what was happening around her, although she was also eager to play. She liked to cuddle, which was another quality I was seeking. She had the best markings, and once I picked her up, I was hesitant to put her down. I had already noticed other prospective buyers keeping their eye on her and me, in hope I would change my mind about getting her. I have spent every day with her since then. She's usually right next to me. If she doesn't notice when I leave the room, she often goes through the house until she finds me and we are together again. As I am working on this video, she is sitting in my lap, sleeping. I needed another buddy since my little Gracie passed away. So Kaya, was a welcome friend. She's now six months old. Come on, Kaya. Come on, get the stick. Come on, get the stick. She's now six months old and 11 pounds, and she's gone through spaying, which she really noticed that first couple of days. 
The making of a good boat dog is more than just including your dog on the boat when you are traveling. Dogs can make the trip enjoyable or a complete disaster by their behavior and fears from the unknown. We're taking it slow with Kaya. In January, when we first brought Kaya on our boat, she bolted and then sat and shook when the big diesel engines were started. She was fearful and whined nonstop. When I left to go outside the boat to lift the fenders and stow the lines, she was worried about being so high in the upper helm and wanted to be in the arms of either myself or Paul. I'll admit, I was also a little worried that a boating lifestyle wasn't going to suit her. Now, when we're on the dock, she often Come takes on. to running around the outside of the boat. I often have to stop her by coaxing her okay, down with the here. promise of a cookie. Mommy got you another cookie. Wait. Come on. Good girl. That's a good girl. Now you stay off of that. Then get her life jacket on before she heads up there again. We don't know how well Kaya swims. I have heard from veterinarians that small dogs who have long bodies and short legs are sometimes not the best swimmers. I realize now I should have put her in the bathtub to see how she did before I brought her to the ocean. It's too late now, so I'll just have to watch her closely. She will fall in eventually and the water will be cold. And I am told by others with boat dogs here in Washington that will be the last time she'll want to get in that deep water. This time around, Kaya is still fearful of the diesel engines when we start them and let them run to warm up. She hides. She even ran down into the forward stateroom and tried to hide between the bed and the wall. I almost expect this behavior from a puppy. All the loud noises are scary. This time, we even had a loud squeal telling us the instrument thought our oil pressure was low, which it wasn't. That was very loud and disturbing to even Paul and me. Once we're underway, Kaya is happy to ride along and doesn't mind being in the very front to see where we are headed. What you think? Not too sure about that. You're going to get your children here. You're a salty dog in training. You're going to be a good motor because you're starting as a little puppy. tries so hard to be helpful. You gonna hold the bedspread down for mommy? Is that what you're gonna do? Hold the bedspread down? Couldn't have done it without you. Such an important job. 
I'm gonna go get the pillows. You stay here. Stay. There, you did a good job. You did such a good job. What a good girl. I couldn't have done it without you. Once we're stopped and anchored, she finds comfort in lying in the sun and listening to the water while the wind blows through her hair, and I am relieved. The first thing I'm going to train Kaya to do is really come when I call her. I've been a little lax on this command, but on the water, it's going to be vital to stop her from trying to jump. But I know it's going to happen one day, and hopefully she will have her life vest on and one of us close by. The second command we're going to work on is to stop and wait. This command will also be vital in keeping her from harm's way. And I wouldn't feel right about not reminding you to have life jackets for both yourself and your dog close by and within reach. We're at Anchor for the first time this season. This is another first experience for Kaya. Of course, when I turned the generator on, she bolted. Now, the generator is in a de sound deadening box and isn't very loud, but Kaya was convinced that we were keeping monsters in the basement. Her eyes got as big as saucers. See, Dad, what you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. There's monsters in this boat. You pretty sure there's monsters down there somewhere? I think you all. You're pretty sure there's some monsters. You's a ferocious guard dog. Don't you forget it. You's a ferocious guard dog. It's gonna be okay. Yeah. See all that stuff outside? You're gonna be okay. Yes, you will. We took Kaya for a hike today. She had great fun. It was her first time on a beach, and she enjoyed all the wonderful smells. She tried to eat seaweed, but I wasn't sure how her stomach would fare on that choice. Last night, she was a little lethargic after getting to and licking the seagull poop that a seagull so proudly plopped on our bow. We were worried because she wouldn't eat her dinner either. However, after a rough night with strong winds and a rocking boat, she slept soundly between us all night and was her happy, playful self again this morning. There was another reason it was a rough night. After dinner... Paul decided since the current and wind were strong, he would take our tender off the cliffs since it tends to bang during the night on rough water. He tied it onto Sea Oasis. The last time I saw it, I asked Paul if he had tied it really tight. He assured me that he had. I thought it looked farther away the second time I looked back out, but he said it was okay, so I just let it go. It had to be my imagination. After 8.30, we heard a thud on the boat. It is dark by now, and we both looked at each other. Okay, there is debris in the water, logs in particular, so maybe one nudged us. We didn't think too much of it. Around 9 o'clock, Paul looked out 
one last time to check on the tender when he exclaimed, The dinghy isn't there. What? I said. No, Paul exclaimed. It's gone. Well, since we were out in the middle of the ocean, it stood to reason that it wasn't stolen. It had to become untied and floated away. Of course, the moon wasn't up yet, so we had to impatiently wait for some kind of light to see if the dinghy was anywhere around. We slowly watched the moon creep up on the cliff beside us until finally it was out, full and bright. According to the wind and the current, the dinghy should have blown toward shore and hopefully was still there. We couldn't see it anywhere. Our two biggest fears, that it had floated away and was lost forever, or that it had floated toward the shore and it was now hopelessly hung up in the rocks and was being blown in and torn up by those rocks all night. This is a two-year-old tender that we order to our specifications, one that is exactly what we wanted. So basically, we were thinking of $12,000 floating away. Neither Paul nor I slept well for several reasons. Kaya is small, but somehow she takes up a lot of bed. <laughs> this doesn't usually bother us, but on this night, when tensions were running so high, it did. We were also worried about her and whether she would be sick or not from the seagull droppings. Plus, as I stated, the current was swift and the wind strong and our boat rocked and rolled unusually all night. Our solid wooden doors rattled, waves pounded the hull, and creaks we'd never heard were all playing a symphony of bangs, splashes, and rattles. And we were both worried about the tender's fate through the night. By this morning, all our tossing and turning and worrying was wasted time. The tender sat on the beach without even tide getting near her. It looked like we had tied it up there on purpose. Thank God. We were so relieved. We managed to get the attention of a neighboring boater in this tri-hull. Thankfully, he rode his dinghy over so that Paul could retrieve it. And then Kaya, who had been feeling puny the night before, was back to smiling and playing and eating this morning. When we returned from our hike, she quickly picked the coolest, darkest place on the boat to take her nap. I've said it before, and I think it's worthy of saying again. I cannot stress how much fun it is to have a good dog with you when you are traveling, boating, hiking, or just watching TV or reading a book on a rainy day. I smile and find happiness just watching my dog thoroughly enjoy an activity or discover something for the first time. It makes the activity more fun for both of us. There's one thing for sure. Kaya loves us with all of her heart, and we love her with the same intensity right back. We hope you'll continue to watch our channel. Watching Kaya grow up and see her adventures while becoming an experienced boat dog will happen over time, so I'm sure this video will likely have a part two. Until then, stay happy and healthy, and we'll see you next time. We invite you to keep watching by clicking above me for a video we think you'll enjoy, or to my left, which is a playlist with many more videos on various topics and adventures from Seattle, the San Juan Islands, and the Canadian Islands. And please visit sandyswanson.net for more information. Thanks for watching.